Why, hello there, it's Flynn the Force, and today I'll be showing you guys something I've been working on. It's a Minecraft combination lock, as you can see behind me. It's in the shape of my face. In the shape of my Minecraft skin's face. Okay, so this has taken me quite a while to work on, and so by the press of the button, it rotates, you can hear the pistons going on right now, and it rotates the face around. And as you can see in the back, it's been quite a big project. So here is the basic concept here. So it rotates the blocks like this. Now, um, this concept was originally made by Mumbo Jumbo, I believe. I'll have a link to his channel down below. He created the piston feed tape concept. Um, yeah, now with piston feed tapes, um, piston feed tapes are a good way of storing data. Full cauldrons give off a redstone signal when um, put up to a comparator. They um, give off a redstone signal. So I've used that to detect when the puzzle of my face is complete. Here we have another cauldron that powers a redstone signal through a comparator. And that powers th these, which push out a redstone block. So, that powers the door I have down there. So, hope I'm not losing you. Um, so basically, when the door is incomplete, when my so when my face is incomplete, it, it gives off a um the redstone signal turns off, and then that turns off. Um, have a switch, redstone torch switch, and then that turns on the the pistons, which push out a redstone block, which powers that, which closes the door. So the door is only open if my face is complete. So, and the green is the bottom one, as you can see, and the red is the top. So it's, there's three rotating reel, um, reels like that built into the whole face. So I will run you through how it works. Or first I'll actually um, complete the lock and open the door. I will have the download in the description of my piston, um, my piston feed tape combination lock. Yeah, so there's a thing I've noticed is that the green one rotates the fastest out of the three. As you can see, it takes that one about, I'll count, one, two, three, four, five. Five seconds for that one to complete. The middle one, takes about six, seven seconds to complete, and it takes the red one about six seconds to complete. This is all due to the way that I've wired the redstone for each layer. I will explain all of that later. Now I will um, fast forward the video while I um, solve the combination lock, so see you later. Okay, I'm back, and uh, as you can see, I've completed um, about 99% of the puzzle. It's just that one little bit there that is left incomplete, so when I press that button, it will open up the door. Now, I must say, if you spam the buttons, it does stuff up the door. You have to wait for the pistons to finish pushing the reel around, um, otherwise it will push some of the blocks out the front of the face. Um, I... Th yeah. Okay, so I'm going to open up the door. Now, I'll push the last button, and it will open up the door. And there we go, the door is open. So, um, I will now run you through how each of the buttons work. Each layer is a bit different, as I had to um, configure them differently, um, because I could only fit it into... A I just the way I move the uh, the way I put the redstone around each other, um, I'll, it'll all be explained. Okay, so I will 
We made three. Okay. So here we have the green. We'll start with the green. So it goes up here. Um, use slabs to rise it up, and then it powers the slime, um, the sticky piston on the slime block to push the redstone block up. Now the first thing that um it powers is um. Okay, well, I have obsidian here, so the slime, it doesn't get moved by the slime block. Then, so that powers the sticky, well, the regular pistons there that push that, that push the cauldrons that way. And then, the second thing that's powered is I have some repeaters here that are delayed a bit. Then, push, then it pushes the cauldrons that have just been pushed to here across that way, and then around here, goes all the way around here, got a few repeaters to delay it, and then it powers these pistons to push the cauldrons out that way, or actually, um, I'm incorrect, it, it actually these pistons here get powered before those ones, as um, I have some repeaters here to delay the signal, so it pushes the blocks at the front of the face sideways first, and then it pushes the cauldrons, which have just been moved to here, out that way, in the place of the original blocks on the side of the face. Hopefully I didn't overcomplicate that. So, okay. Now onto the blue button. So here we have some repeaters. Just put them there for no reason to well to extend the signal up the stairs. Um okay, so across there, then that we have the slab um vertical way of carrying a redstone signal. Now um so that is actually not powering that repeater there, just in case you, you didn't realize that. So it's powering it, all these repeaters. Then it goes over here above those repeaters. Signal not even touching. Then it powers the sticky piston. Um, pushing this line block which pushes the redstone block all the way to this sticky piston. Which vice versa pushes the redstone block to there. Powering the next level. Which works the same way. That pushes there. That pushes there. Then up around here, and go underneath here. Then it powers those which push the front bit of the face, and then the delayed one which pushes the pistons which push it out. Okay, so now we're on to the red one, the top layer. So, okay, so. This one, I have it so it goes up over the door, because I was starting to run out of space. So, okay, the signal goes up here, goes here, down. Okay, then I have it so it goes up vertical this way. Then, I actually made the top one first, if you're wondering. Um, and then I made the green one last, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, same. Same old, same old. Pushes that. Pushes that. Then I have it so the signal is... Uh, what I put in this one? Yeah, so it's going up horizontal, well, vertical there. Um, across here. Across there. So it powers that one first. And then got some delayed repeaters. So it pushes that one out after that one. So yeah, that's how that works. Now, I'll show you how the locking mechanism for the door works now. So here we have the um, cauldron with the water. And as you can see, there's a redstone signal coming from that. That goes into the block where there's the redstone torch on the other side. If you didn't know, you can... Um, if there is a redstone signal behind a torch on the wall, it turns off the torch. So that means when there is no water there, when it's a cauldron without water or just a regular block, it doesn't give off a signal 
therefore the redstone torch is on, powering all of this, all the way up to here, which pushes out this redstone block, which powers the redstone signal from here, all the way down to the door, keeping the door open. Okay, and the same goes for the other locks. Okay, so now we're on to the inside. I haven't really done much on the inside. I just have um, a simple elevator here. It makes a lot of noise, but um, yeah. Then I just have a lava door. Simple lava door. So not much down here. Um, so the elevator is another creation of Mumbo Jumbos. Um, there's lots of videos about it. Um, should be able to see that on his channel. I will have a link to how to make this elevator in the description. I'll just do a quick preview of how it works. So down here, um, we have the observers that sense touches the bottom, pushes the slime blocks, pulls that. Yeah, I I'm not too good at explaining how that one works. Uh, slime block physics are not my strong point. I mean, anyway. Press that button, and then triggers the observer pushing us up. Only... Okay, that dropped me through the platform. That was not meant to happen. Okay. Anyway. So... Hope you enjoyed. This is my piston combination lock in Minecraft. See you next time. Goodbye.